Hey guys, good. I was about to say good afternoon, good morning, good morning. Oh my gosh, I haven't been live in the morning in like literally years, literally years. But I'm excited to come to you guys bright and early this Monday morning to hopefully prevent some of you guys from making some major um, mistakes um, going forward. Also to educate a lot of you guys as well. And then hopefully to get, provide you guys some insight on a few things that's happening right now. So a lot of you probably see the title. It says, your trust are a scam. Okay, you see the title, your trust is a scam. And that's exactly what we're going to be talking about on today's live stream. We're going to be talking about those trust that you guys set up um during covid time or you're presently looking to set it up right and guess what from what i hear online and what i see on the department of justice website a lot of your trust may be considered a scam and also you're probably handling it wrong, which makes it a scam. So we're going to dive into this. So if you are someone that have set up recently, set up a trust, know somebody that has done it, you, you were about to do it or you're about to do it, then you want to tune in into this morning's live stream. Okay. If you know someone that is um, promoting these trusts and um, have done it or have done it, then you want to share this live stream with them as well. And I know a lot of you are going to be a little maybe disturbed after seeing today's um, live stream, um, especially if you fit within the category that we're going to talk about today. Okay, so let's rock this thing one out. So on Instagram, I cannot see your questions quickly. So if you want to send me any question that you want me to answer throughout today's live stream, please post it in the Q&A section, okay? And then for um, Facebook and YouTube, um, you guys can post that I can see it behind the scenes. Um, if you guys on Instagram and you want to see my screen, you want to head over to our YouTube channel, which is Felocity TV, um, so you can see my screen, okay? So we're about to rock it out. Y'all ready? Y'all about to rock it out with me? We're about to rock it out. All right. All right. So first things first, the other day I was just scrolling on the World Wide Web and I normally peruse um, the U.S. Treasury, IRS, the Department of Justice and various sites, FinCEN, everything to stay on top of what's happening. Right. Um, so regularly I'll just peruse all of those major sites so I can stay abreast, abreast on what's happening in the financial industry, right? And so I can come and educate you guys and educate my team. Well, actually for me to stay on top of for my clients primarily, secondarily coming to educate you guys as well, okay? So while I was perusing the internet the other day, I ran across a recent Department of Justice, a DOJ case that is presently happening that involves trust. So I'm going to repeat that. I was perusing the internet last week and I fell across quite a few, uh, quite a few Department of Justice cases that involve trust. And I know I've seen over the past three to four years a surge of people promoting you guys setting up them trust, you guys using trust to save on taxes, you guys um, putting using trust to conceal and hide your assets, and a lot of different various reasons, right? We're not going to go into that. You guys saw it because I know I saw it. Um, so I know you guys saw it. Some of you have actually purchased um, some trust that wasn't done through a reputable attorney and end up setting the trust up as well, okay? So come to find out, while I was on the site, I saw the recent um, Department of Justice case, and I was totally shocked. Number one, the reason why I was shocked was because I didn't think that, not to say that I don't think the Department of Justice is focused on those type of cases, but I just didn't think that you guys were mishandling 
the trust i thought that by the time you guys did invest in trust and stuff like that you knew what you could and what you couldn't do because you have um seek the professional help of an attorney or an accountant like myself that specialized in trust and things like that but come to find out that's not what's happening so we about to talk about it so there was a recent case there was a recent indictment and guys if you want to see my screen head over to my youtube channel which is philosophy tv because i'm about to um read through the case and throughout the case i'm going to stop and i have some major points that we need to point out today that's relative to a lot of what you guys are doing and also the the whole premise behind this case is relative to what a lot of you are doing right now a lot of you and i'm not going to go into that so if you want to um get to the juice guys stay in into the full live stream so i'm about to share my screen so if you want to see my screen once again head over to our youtube channel so if you guys are just coming in i'm talking about trust everybody has been wanting to set up trust um and guess what a lot of your trust may be considered scams based on the way that you've been handling it okay so everything in this video is alleged, okay, until the case is fully, um, until the defendants are fully prosecuted, okay? So everything right now that we're going to say is alleged, but this is what's happening, okay? It says the defendants allegedly caused tens of millions of dollars in unpaid federal income taxes. A federal grand jury in Denver returned an indictment unsealed today, charging a Colorado man, and I'm not going to say their name, okay, charging a Colorado man and a Texas man with conspiring to defraud the United States and with assisting in the preparation of false income tax returns. The indictment also charges the Colorado man and his spouse with evading their personal federal income taxes. So, guys, first things first, before we even go into this, right, let me make sure that we are very clear on this. Even if you guys are selling drugs, you guys are committing scams, you guys are doing babysitting on the side, you're selling water on the street, you guys are um, doing landscaping under the table, whatever you guys are doing that is not taxed by a third party, like from a job, you have to pay taxes on that money. I don't know where, who and where did you guys get this notion that if you didn't make $10,000 or um, in your businesses or on the side hustle or whatever the case may be, that you guys don't have to file that on your tax return. That is not true. The only way you guys are not forced to file the tax return if there is not a net profit of $400 or more, that means, for example, your business made $1,000, your expenses was $700. So because your net self-employment income is not more than $400, then it wouldn't be no tax. But any income above $400, you have to file it, guys. I don't know who taught you guys this online. They have cheated you guys. And well, they've, ooh, they've misled you guys to think that you don't have to file that income. So let me just go ahead and debunk that before we dive into it, okay? All righty. So it says, according to the indictment, since 2017, I'm not going to mention the people's name, okay? The Colorado man and the Texas man, along with others, promoted and sold an, ab an abusive trust tax shelter to clients nationwide for fees ranging from approximately $25,000 to $50,000. So let me be very clear. They are not concerned about what the fees are, the $25,000, the $50,000, because we can charge whatever that we deem our services are worth. Now, that $25,000 and that $50,000 is very important, especially if they feel as though that them people were doing some scams on trust. So then they feel as though if they compare that $25,000 $25, to $50,000 range to legitimate attorneys and um, other professionals that prepare trust, their fees may be inflated. 
So that's why they're emphasizing the fee structure because normally when people are doing them scams, you guys inflate your fees a bit, okay? So that's why they're actually mentioning, mentioning the fees. You guys can charge whatever you want to charge, okay? All right, give me one second, guys. Got to go back to my page. Okay. All righty. So it says the indictment alleges that the two people instructed their clients to assign their income to a series of sham trusts to make it appear as if the income was no longer owned or controlled by the client. So I got to pause again. So that's where the problem came, guys. The problem came is not that the trust itself was illegal because having a trust is not illegal, guys. That's part of, I'm going to cut that piece here. That's part of building generational wealth. That's part of having an estate plan. That's part of preparing for your death. The trust part is not the scam. The scam come into place is when they now took income that that was supposed to be directed to somewhere else and they directed it to the trust. That is called the assignment of income law. Guys, many tax preparers and CPAs and other professionals do not know tax law. And the only reason why I know tax law is because I'm trying to become a tax attorney, okay? So in that particular case, during my reading, there is the assignment of income law that states that if the income was made by you for you, that you are supposed to file that on your tax return. Guys, you cannot now assign that income to an LLC or to an S Corp or to a partnership or to a trust or to a corporation. You cannot, if that income was made by you and paid to you, you cannot move it to a trust. Let me give you guys some real examples so you can put this in practice. Let's say you are a sole real estate agent. And you know, in some states, the majority of states as an independent real estate agent, you cannot have a business if you are a broker. So they end up paying the agent the income and also assigning the agent the income via the 1099 that they issue them at the end of the year. So in that particular case, you have to file that income on your personal tax return. You cannot assign it to your S Corp or assign it to your partnership or assign it to your trust or assign it to your corporation. So let's say, for example, you own an asset. But instead of tra transferring it over to the trust completely, the correct way and don't touch it again, what you do is just assign it on paper, have the income hit the trust, and then you control the income. The guys, the moment that you assign assets or businesses to the trust, you are no longer supposed to maintain control. And guys, on Instagram, I cannot see your questions. I, I'm multicasting, okay? So you guys got to put your questions in the Q&A chat if you guys want me to answer your questions, okay? No, that's not so. Um, Simply Lucci says the mistake they made was not um, donating it to a nonprofit or ministry. No, that's not the case in this particular situation. But I can give you scenarios of when that is even illegal. OK, so we about to rock it out. OK. Okay, we'll worry, we'll worry, we'll worry. Okay, the assignment of income rule, that's where we were, right? Okay, however, they say the paper trail was allegedly false as the client continued to benefit from and control the income assigned to the sham trust. In addition to that, they promoted the sale 
of the trust tax shelter allegedly resulting in tens of millions of dollars in federal income tax not being paid to the IRS. So guys, the moment that you try to move income that was really your for you and you assign it to these businesses, you are committing tax fraud. And I remember me talking about the assignment of income rule um, before. Was it maybe a year and a half ago? And I gave you guys scenarios. And I'll try to tell my team. I just told my team today they have to start organizing my content based on the topic now so I can easily find my content for you guys. Okay. So it says those people allegedly assured clients that after transferring income or personal property to the trust, that those clients will could retain full control over the assets and could continue to use them for their personal benefit. Guys, once you move those assets out of your name and into your trust, you cannot benefit from it primarily. It has to be strategy and it has to be done correctly. But many of you are doing exactly what these people have done. You move your assets over to a trust, you put your businesses over to a trust, and you're paying your personal expenses from that trust, or you're trying to um, hide income that was supposed to be taxed on your personal return to that trust. We cannot do that, guys. All right, let's go back. Okay, it says they also directed their clients to open bank accounts and obtain credit cards. Don't this sound familiar? In the names of their trust and to pay personal expenses with those funds held in those accounts. So in addition to them, you know, trying to assign the income to the trust so they won't pay taxes on that. They also got credit cards and bank accounts and used those credit cards and bank accounts for their personal benefit. And so guys, that's what we call commingling. And you, but when you are a trust and you've already transferred assets, you cannot do that. And this also is applicable for you guys that have transferred assets to your S Corp or transfer assets to your corporation. All right. Okay, so they also said. They also allegedly directed their clients to transfer real estate and other assets to the trust to avoid paying income taxes on any capital gains incurred from the sale of those assets. So what they had people doing was if they if the people knew that they were about to sell the properties, they end up moving it to the trust so they won't have to pay personal taxes on it. Guys, the IRS is hip. Y'all are trying to take big boy, rich boy tax strategies. And I'm not trying to be funny on a poor man's budget. Stop taking tax advice from these 60 second um, YouTube short, 60 second Instagram reels and TikToks. If you cannot do that. You need to sit with your own accountant, your own attorney to go through your personal situation. And then so we can advise you on how to manage it. Because a lot of you guys pay for those trusts. And then the people never told you guys how to manage it. And then you're, you're doing exactly what these people are doing and they're getting caught up.
Like guys, see, this is why I stopped saying tax strategies years ago because you guys didn't even want to even do the initial paperwork correctly. You don't want to keep the documentation that you need. This is why my book Audit Proof is coming out perfect timing, simply because you guys want to do all you guys want to save all this money on taxes. But the first key to that is documentation and having your own accountant. <laughs> Simply Luigi said, well, that's why they're in trouble. They moved it and it was still using it and controlling it. Once it's moved, it belongs to the trust name. <laughs> Guys, we cannot take shortcuts with this financial game. No one. You know, as much as you guys see that Grant Cardone post, say, oh, I do this. Remember, Grant Cardone went to school for accounting. <laughs> You know, and then in addition to that, he, he talked with his accountants. But you guys are getting advice from all these fly-by-night coaches. And the interesting part about it is I don't see any of them um, even posting too much online right now. They didn't got the money and skedaddled. They didn't burnt you guys and skedaddled. Oh, goodness. All right, let's finish reading, guys. All right, it says... It says they are charged with using the abusive trust tax shelter. So they are being charged with using the tax, using the trust illegally, okay, to conceal a substantial amount of their own income from the IRS. Allegedly, they signed trust instruments purporting to create for trust open bank accounts in the name of each entity and pay for personal living expenses from those bank accounts. The indictment alleges that they assigned nearly all of their income to their trust and transferred multiple real estate properties to one of their trusts before selling the property. They also then filed allegedly filed false individual tax returns with the IRS that failed to report the income they assigned to the trust. So the moment you moved income that was supposed to be taxed to you personally over to your trust and then don't file it, then you filed a false tax return with the IRS. They said that they are facing a maximum penalty of five years in prison for conspiring to defraud the United States, three years in prison for each count. So, guys, see the did see with you if you did this, or you might get caught up, which I hope none of you guys are doing this, and I hope that none of you guys get caught up. Yours will be one count because it might be just your trust, right? These people were actually helping other people set up the trust. So they are being indicted on each. They're going to get, they can get three years on each person that they aided in um, filing, well, doing the false, the fake trust. The, like they say, the sham um, trust. And my concern is now for all of those people that have done those trusts with them, all of them after this indictment, right? They also may be having issues, not maybe, the IRS will then be sending them notices. So theirs may not be criminal per se, because it might just be their individual trust, but I'm not sure about that. Don't quote me on it. But they will get a notice from the IRS. So if they're saying per count, what they're going to attempt to do is try to figure out how many um, trusts those people set up. And for all of those people, that will be one count. For every trust, it will be one, one count. So why are we talking about this? <laughs> so why am I talking about this right now? It's because you guys, this was the other scam of the pandemic. Uh, all of those coaches made millions of dollars selling you guys the notion of concealing your assets, not paying any taxes, 
into your trust and build it and build a generational wealth with you guys purchasing trust. So what you guys did was you paid them the 20,000, 15,000, 30,000 each individual preparer will had different fees, right? You paid them their fees. You moved your assets over and did what you did. And then you you were probably mismanaging it just like the individuals in this indictment. So if you're watching this live stream or you're watching the replay or you're going to watch out the snippets that my team break up, lesson number one, if you have a trust and you moved over those assets to that trust, you no longer retain the benefit of those assets. Lesson number two, you cannot assign income that was for you that is supposed to be filed on your personal tax return or on any other tax form. You cannot assign it to just any corporation, any trust, any S corp or any partnership. Also, a, a lot of financial advisors are doing this. If you don't have a major team, like you're actually a full business and your company has given you the right to now build your team, use your brand, use their brand separate from them and issue your organization a 1099 because you and you pay your team out of all of that. That's a different ball game. But many of you are independent contractors and independent contractor income is supposed to be filed on your Schedule C, guys. You cannot move independent contract, independent contractor or self-employment income over to an S-Corp, over to a partnership or over to a corporation or trust. It is the assignment of income rule that you are breaking in tax law. You also cannot pay your personal expenses from that. Oh gosh, I just bust my thing. So do you guys have any questions at all? Hmm? This thing want to get caught in my head. We don't want to make me have a wig moment where my wig come off in the live stream. <laughs> Do you guys have any questions at all, guys? The floor is yours. Do you guys have any questions at all? This reminds me of the housing crisis. When the housing market crashed due to the, due to the no doc loans, this reminds me of that. Like the moment that our community got aware, were informed of the strategy, they end up shutting it down. But if we were doing it wrong, okay, shut it down. But if we were doing it right, ugh, don't shut us down now. But in the trust case situation, a lot of you guys are doing it wrong. A lot of you guys are doing it wrong. So do you guys have any questions at all before I get out of here? How long have I been live? Let me see if there's any questions. Well, that's why they're in trouble. They moved it and we're still managing it. Yep. Okay, guys. Okay. So it looks like you guys don't have any questions at all. But I wanted to show you guys what exactly is a trust. Um, because, yes, it provides you a little bit of tax. Bend, and this is what confused me. I'm going to be honest. Um, when a lot of people were saying stuff online about these trusts, none of them said anything about the distributive income. Your trust, if it's profit generating assets, there should be some type of distributive income agreement or something that will then roll over to your personal tax return. But what I'm noticing, I don't recall not seeing one 
post that say anything that, oh, yeah, don't forget, you still may have some of this income roll over to your personal because you need to distribute a portion of that income. All right, so I'm on the um, Fidelity site. What is a trust? A trust is a fiduciary agreement that allows a third party or trustee to hold assets on behalf of a beneficiary or beneficiaries. Trust can be arranged in many ways and can specify exactly how and when the assets pass to the beneficiaries. Since trusts usually avoid probate, your beneficiaries may gain access to these assets more quickly than they might to assets that are transferred using a will. Additionally, if it is an if it if it is an ir irrevocable trust, it may not be considered part of the taxable estate. So fewer taxes may be due upon your death. And I think that's what a lot of people have gotten you guys into with those irrevocable trusts. The moment you guys did that, then your assets were really locked in. OK, assets in a trust may also be able to pass outside of probate, saving time, court fees and potentially reducing estate taxes as well. Other benefits of trust include control of your wealth. It says here you can specify the, the terms of a trust precisely controlling when and to whom distributing may be made. You may also, for example, set up a revocable trust so that the trust assets remain accessible to you during your lifetime. And so that's what I have. I have a revocable trust, okay? I don't have an irrevocable trust because that means I can never access nothing while I'm alive. And I think a lot of you guys have revo irrevocable trust because that's what I was seeing online. And now you guys will be screwed because you were probably mishandling things prior to today's live stream. So it says the revocable trust. So guys, my eyes starting to go bad. I was just doing good for a minute. Okay. <laughs> okay. It says, okay. Set up a revocable trust so that the trust assets remain accessible to you during your lifetime while designating to whom the remaining assets will pass thereafter. Even when there are complex situations such as children from more than one marriage. Protection of your legacy. A properly constructed trust can help protect your estate from your heirs, um, from your heirs' creditors, or from beneficiaries who may not be adept to at money management. And last but not least, privacy and probate savings. Probate is a matter of public record. A trust may allow assets to pass outside of probate and remain private. Okay, so where is it on Fidelity site, guys, that it says pay no taxes? If that was a benefit presently for you to pay no taxes right now while you are alive, you don't think on that Fidelity site and the explanation of um, what it is that they wouldn't have mentioned the immediate tax benefits while you are alive? No, it says what? Tax savings what? during your state, during the transfer of assets. See, this is how you guys are going to get in trouble because you're trying to save taxes through a trust while you're alive. Yes, there's a few strategies that you can do that with, but there's very few. And guys, you guys are not even financially wealthy enough to be able to even do that. That means you will have to have assets that are basically in a trust that you don't really need, that is in a, a revocable trust, that is that you don't really need, that will pay you a distributive income on a monthly, quarterly, or annual basis. Um, and that's it. And it's a minimum amount. Because what's the benefit of it if you want to, you know, get a large amount? But could you survive off that? Most of you need all access to your assets, your business income, so guys, we really need to stop taking major generational wealth building tax strategies 
from the online gurus. I know you guys see my post and you probably like, Philosophy, what makes you so special? I don't fluff nothing up for you guys. If I talk about a particular topic, I tell you the pros and the cons behind it. I never come and use a snippet of something without it. Like it even, like I be, tr I try to figure out how to, you know, fit the bill and then post short, content you can even ask my team and then i'll be like oh my gosh well they need to know about this because that kind of negates what i just said so the, the the moral of the story is you guys need your own accountant this online social media guru has actually bankrupt the community and now i have another worry on my head for you guys is the ppp the sba loans the ERC, the Employment Sick Leave Credit. Now I got to worry about all of you people that done them tr these trust. This is ne so next. Me and my team are going to be fighting the IRS because you guys didn't roll over your income correctly. You had an asset and you got audited because they see the income reported to you and they don't see it on your tax return. You guys are causing more problems for yourself. I know it seems so attractive. I know they sold you. I know they said you could build generational wealth. Guys, it's levels to generational wealth. First of all, you got to save a smidgen so you can invest. Or you got to make enough money so you can take that money and then invest. Then that investment needs to do, you know, get some returns. So you can continue to keep investing and never touch that money for years and 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 years. A lot of you guys have these S corps and they told you you don't have to pay taxes on it. So you're not paying yourself on W-2. And then they tell you that if you do this, you're not a manager. They're, they're lying to you, telling you you're not a manager, but you're actually working in an S corp. And the income primarily from that business is driven from you. Guys, we have to fully take all of the mess that you guys have experienced, all of the scams that you guys have been uh, uh, convinced to take over these past few years. You guys have to take your lessons from this and hire your own accountant. I don't know what else I can do, guys. I, I, I think... Um, I need to cut this piece of hair because it's really distracting me. I, I don't even know what else I can do. Because, see, guys, I actually run a whole firm. I cannot come live every day. So if you guys want your own accountant, you have to actually get on my calendar and come and work with me. Now, I will be able to go live at least once a week, but I am busy. We, I can't come online like this. I don't even know how people that actually say they have real businesses even be online all day. Lexi said, thank you. Definitely levels. Thanks for doing this. You're welcome, my love. Um, Cherise says, whoa, child, this is really happening out here. Yes, it is, love. <laughs> they coming. They coming. Um, Lexi say, this is what happens when you're always looking for shortcuts. Exactly, guys. And remember, shortcuts, I don't take them. Because every time I did, I got set back. So I realized God was like, no, shortcuts, it, it leads you to the devil. It leads you to make, take quick, take easy route out, shortcuts, cheat the system. It just leads to a lot of um, demise down the end. So guys, now from today's live stream, I'm hoping that you figure out how to manage your trust. And I'm hoping that a lot of you guys have not locked in your assets, your major personal assets, such as your home. Well, you could really do your home. You could. Not, not if you're renting it. Not if you, oh gosh, you guys just should have sat, with, sat down with someone. 
Sharice says, this is why I'm so thorough in explaining life insurance, estate tax planning, estate tax planning. Wow. Yes. Because these people, they, they just take the 60 second post and run with it. And then the professionals like myself, they try to tell them that's not the truth, that you guys don't listen to us. So I hope this served as a major lesson. I've prepared you guys for years as I, you guys have supposed to been building your business with me. As I was in the trenches, I've been telling you guys everything that I went through systems, process. When I was in systems and process phase, I tell you. When I'm in scaling phase, I tell you guys. When because you, I, I, And I'm going to be honest with you guys. If trust was that much of a tax savings for you presently, I would have mentioned it. If you guys don't haven't realized, I don't mention trust at all in any of my content. Because my peak clientele have not built a sufficient amount of wealth to be able to have revocable trust. I mean, irrevocable trust. Lexi says, okay, hold on. Sharice says, Okay, Cherie says that a state tax doesn't apply to every exactly. Lexi said, Bible says people have itchy ears. What to hear? What's smooth, what's smooth and easy? Wow. Cherie says, I've been following you for years, and you are the reason I explain things the way I do. Oh, thank you, Cherie. And the reason why I do that, guys, is because I so, because, see, guys, I, I'm actually a real firm on the call my office. My assistant will call you. She'll pick up the phone. I'm like, hello. Like, she'll say hello. Uh, but, yes, we. this is what we deal with. And so what happens is that people will come and watch the posts from you guys' social media posts and then say, oh, Falashi, I need to do this. And I'm like, you're not there to do this. And then they attempt to try to discredit me because they're not there. And they're like, well, this person said this, but this person said this, but they didn't say it to you. Remember, guys, the key to taxes is that everybody's situation is different. Everybody's scenario, it will never be the same unless you guys have exactly the same amount of kids in your house, lifestyle, income, assets, revenue stocks, your stuff will never be the same as anyone. So comparing what somebody else's tax refund is to yours and y'all are not even in the same tax bracket, have the same amount of kids, have the same amount of assets, have the same amount of revenue generating activities and the same amount, same type of revenue generated activities, you will never have the same tax scenario. And I don't want to de discredit anybody online or debunk anybody, but shame on you guys for, for putting content out there just to get eyes. And now my people, Black people, African people, Spanish people, I mean, Hispanic, don't just... Y'all get what I'm trying to say. Are the ones that's now going to be suffering in the next five years. And actually, I told my team this morning, I said, guys, y'all need to get my content organized by topic. Here's why. Everything I have predicted or have tried to prepare you guys to not do or warn you or prevent you from doing is coming to a head. I told my team, I even have the recording. We are going to be pushing out my content that I've been saying for the past eight years, for the next 10 years, because you guys were just starting to get the tax notice. You guys will just start going to tax court in the next five years. You guys will just get the subpoena or the summons to go to court or the warrant for your arrest in the next five to 10 years. You're, this is This is just the beginning. Oh, but because I'm not giving you fluffy. Guys, there's nothing fluffy about me. I'm skinny. I'm petite. I don't do fluff. I'm a straight shooter in my personal life, my professional life. Across the board, I speak the truth and only the truth. I'm not going to lie to you for nothing. Unless you got a gun in my head. <laughs> 
Okay, and I got to get in as a life death of situation, right? Then I'll lie. I'll be fluffy then. But I'm not going to do that to make money. I'm not going to do that for you guys to buy my course. I'm not going to do that for you guys to buy my book. And I'm not going to do that for you guys to become a client of mine and trick you guys with telling you guys about tax strategies and stuff that's not really applicable to you guys and actually hard to take. Sharissa, people don't understand their situation is custom to them only. I advise, all advice doesn't apply to everyone. Exactly. And then um, Lexi says, no fluff team. Let's go. <laughs> I've never been, I've never done fluff. And I'm not going to start it to make money. God will never suffer me. I never will probably make as much money as the scammers. Because y'all done gave them all the money. Y'all probably broke now. That's why y'all called in my office wanting discounts. No tea, no shade. Cherie said, yes, the latest, oh, let me put up this. She said, yes, the latest scam is the self-employment tax credit. It doesn't even exist. <laughs> no, Cherise, can you send me that on Facebook? Oh my gosh. It's literally them trying to get, oh my God. If you can send me that, because I've been hearing people saying don't pay no self-employment tax, but I didn't know they were trying to say it's a tax credit and Oh gosh, y'all. You see what I'm talking about? You see what I'm talking about? Thank you, Connor. You see what I'm talking about, guys. You have to have your own. And see, this is the thing. And I got to be honest too. Some of your accountants don't know stuff, right? They older like my dad. No Tino Shea dad. They older like my dad. They not here. They not used to the online business, the way we do business down there. They not hit. I understand. But you cannot, don't stay with them. Move to someone like me that knows the tax strategy so you don't have to be cheating to try to get tax strategies because your accountant don't know them. So Connor said, facts, facts. People need to learn how the tax code works. Yes, you want to know um, the other latest game? Yes, tell me, Connor. Don't do this, y'all. Don't do this. Yes, tell me the other one. Thank you, Sharice. Hey, Tommy. So he said, scam was all win. I wouldn't dare ask for a discount. <laughs> I love you, Tommy. You and my wife. I love you guys. Okay, guys. So here's the thing. Please, from today forward. Um, yeah, kind of put in the um the most recent um scam. Okay, he said, making a state trust acted like an indigenous. Oh, indigenous tribe community? No. Can you DM me something? Oh, my God. So what are they doing? Classifying that trust into like a nonprofit and then saying it's a nonprofit or something? Are they connecting the two? Oh, my gosh. Guys, we have to be on the lookout. And then honestly, guys, you have to be on the lookout to protect your future, your family. Because the only person that's hurting, guys, is you. It's not me, it's not my clients, it's not my team, you understand, it's not my family, it is you guys. You are the ones that are taking this blind advice and you're going and you're paying them that 10, 15, 20,000, whatever it is, you guys are paying them whatever the fee is without even blinking, okay? And then you are... Um, paying these things and getting caught up but something that just dawned on me a lot of you are also and i'm gonna connect the dots to this case remember they said in this case that they had bank accounts and credit cards guys remember you've been seeing online people telling you guys to get these credit cards to start these businesses and do this and pull money out and do this that's illegal you guys that is illegal. If your business was assigned a credit card, if you look at the terms and conditions of that credit card, it says it's supposed to be best only used for the business. Not to pay your mortgage, not to pay your personal expenses. And guys, do me one favor. If you're on YouTube, head over to um, Fingerprinting Gurus and go ahead and like and subscribe to Tommy's channel. 
as well. And I think Lexi has an amazing um, group on Facebook. I haven't been over there, Lexi, in a long time, but I remember her group used to be popping, guys. Uh, make sure you click their group as well. Connor said, Yes, I will also, I got to call, I got to call the uh, uh, racist for calling an influencer out for because I know travel chiefs who actually have, oh, oh, okay. That, guys, it, they're just doing anything to make a quick buck. Anything that sounds good. It's like they're, they're whatever, they're just regurgitating what they're hearing um, other people talk about. And another thing with a lot of these tax strategies, a lot of these people are talking about it, but they're not actually doing it themselves. That's the thing. A lot of them talk about it, but they're not actually doing it themselves. And then one more thing before I go, since we're talking about that, I've been seeing a recent tax post that is almost going viral talking about um, having your dogs, being able to write off your dog expenses, your dog vet bills and your dog expenses, as long as you classify that dog as a guard dog. Guys, if your dog is a toy poodle like mine, or a Bichon Frise like my old dog, or some other type of French type of poodle that can't defend a lick, you will lose that deduction, guys. They're not talking about no little straggly little dog that's going to nibble on somebody's leg and they you kick the dog. They're actually talking about a defense dog, a trained dog to defend. Now, for medical purposes, yes, if you are blind, you might need a dog pal. I forgot what they call it in technical terms. Now, you can write that off. If your tool poodle was classified as your, your dog, safety dog, I don't know what the name is. I'm sorry, guys, right? then yes, you can write that off as a medical expense, right? But having a little toy poodle as a guard dog for your business so you can write it off, guys, that's... Oh, thank you, Connor, service dog. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes, service dog, guys. If if you, if you're not disabled, if your, your doctor did not approve you having or the need for the service dog and it's not an itemized deduction and can be deducted as a medical expense if your dog cannot guard a thing it is not a guard dog if it's one of those cute fluffy dogs it's not a guard dog guys you've been duped on that one too some of you have followed every hack page because they use these little tricks to pull you over but me i gotta tell you guys the truth because I'm the one that's actually going to represent you guys in an audit. This is what we do. If you call my office, I represent year round in audits. Okay. I'm actually in appeal. I have an appeals tomorrow. Okay. For one of my um, OICs. This is what we do in my, uh, my firm. Okay. I represent against audits and I've won 99, by God's grace is mercy. I've won 99% of my audits. So this is what I do. So with these people telling you guys online, I know I cannot defend in an audit, especially if there's no grounds. Okay, so Tommy said, exactly. Many are buying other people's courses, but are not either doing what they are teaching or never implemented what they are talking about. It. I can tell. So Connor said, my dad used to work in the force. So I know the police force write it off. Yes, they can easily. But do you see any of them with a daggone toy poodle, Connor? <laughs> do you ever see any of them with a daggone, um, uh, what is it? Um, what is those little hot dogs? The little cute little hot dog dogs? No. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Connor said, nope. Um, Cherie says, yep, this is why I'm studying to become an enrolled agent so I can do this. So, yes. So let me be honest with you, Cherie. I know I'm a straight shooter. This is six, this is 20 years of experience. So, like I have 20 years of experience, guys. So don't compare what I know and what other professionals know that have been in the game as long as we've been in the game. Because this is 20, and then this is also my 20 years, and then my dad's knowledge that he also taught me, and he's been in business for 38 years. 
So this is a collective of 58 years of tax experience that you guys are doing. Now, kudos to you to do your role agent. I love it. You understand? But to be able to say, you know, you're going to be able to do exactly this, just coming from the test um, without having at least 15 years of experience to sit beside, to, you know, to say that I have, then that's where the challenge comes. Because guys, and I have to be honest with you, and you can call my office to ask them. I still learn every day. Even our CPAs that've been in the office, that've been in business for over forty years, been CPAs, they still learning from me every day, guys. I learn every day. Okay, so this is why I say it's a challenge for you, not just Sharice, but anybody that is just a business owner to try to learn everything about taxes because it takes years and years of time and you guys don't need to waste your time doing that. Hire a professional that fits you, know their stuff, stay on top of the laws and, and go from there. You understand? Because you need to be focused on mastering your business, your industry, not focusing on taxes like us. OK, but yeah, Sharice, I kudos to you. Go get your license, mama. We going look, we need as much help as possible because I feel as though in the next five years, they're going to be easily about maybe three to four million people audited. And it's going to be through an electronic mail audit. It's not going to be face to face because the IRS doesn't have the bandwidth to sustain it, but it will be a paper audit. And that's just just just, you know, um, what I think. So, yes, girl, go get that EA license so you can help represent some of these clients and audits and stuff, because we're going to have about a good maybe four or five million people being audited over the next five to 10 years, maybe even more than that. Connor says, not if you're part of the United States and also not if you're part of a tribal community that has a treaty not to. So taxes are mandatory unless you're part. Oh, yeah. It, it, yeah. Well, see, it, see, so it is mandatory, but it's somewhat. And I think people get it mixed up when they say that mandatory and voluntary. It's mandatory to file if you have a filing requirement. Right. But if you don't have a filing requirement, it's not mandatory to file. Right. You also voluntarily. Um, can throw anything on your tax return. Voluntarily, you could put anything. You could claim any credit on your tax return. Now, if they send you a notice, you have to substantiate those expenses. You have to show that you qualify for those tax credits and things like that. So I think based on how I've been able to analyze the concept of this thing not being required to file is the fact that you 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 have the choice to do whatever you want to do in that document. Now, you have to support it when you get audited. Sharice said, listen, for real, for real, I love it. Yes, Lexi said, got to stay on top of your craft. Yeah, okay, guys. So, um, yeah, guys, do you guys have any questions at all before I get out of here? I think I did a good hour um, with you guys, and I enjoyed myself. And my team was like, oh, because we have our, all my team meetings in the office on Mondays, right? So I met with my marketing team. They was like, oh, I see you going live more. And I'm actually actually enjoying it. I'm going live. I just don't feel comfortable teaching you guys strategy, strategy, strategy without you guys. Well, I don't mind teaching you guys strategy, but you guys have to do the paperwork. No shortcuts. That's all I ask. Just no shortcuts. What's that, Tommy? Tommy said, how that's it? I don't know. I don't know what you mean, Tommy. Unless that was a typo. So, guys, do you guys have any questions before I get out of here? Yep. Yep. Filing a W-2. It is voluntary because you don't have to pay federal taxes. You don't have to have um, federal taxes taken out um, of your tax return, but you are obligated to have Social Security and Medicare taxes taken out. Oh, okay. Oh, thank you. Yes, a hound. Okay, yes. Thank you, Tommy. You knew I didn't know. I would never know. I couldn't even pronounce the last part. That's soon. That's soon. That's. Ah. Okay. 
All right, guys. So I enjoyed today's live stream. It was quite a bit, but I hope that you guys have taken quite a bit from today's content. Number one, talk with your attorney or your accountant on how to manage your trust going forward. Okay. Um, if you are actually taking commingling things and you put assets in your trust that you shouldn't have now after watching the live stream, don't go and do it on your own. Consult with your attorney. You've already excuse me guys gave them fly by night consultants ten to fifteen thousand dollars to do the trust just pay the attorney his hourly rate excuse me it's like three fifty five hundred dollars an hour pick their brain and then either have them assist you in cleaning up your trust guys or get the necessary steps from them to get that trust um cleaned up um what laws say that what what do you mean, um, first lady, um, billionaire? What, what do you mean, what law say what? I do payroll. You can put as many exemptions. Are you asking about the taxes? I get what you said for the W-2. I do payroll, billionaire. So you can put 50 exemptions and it won't take out any federal taxes. You can put federal exempt and it won't take any federal taxes right but once you're at a certain age you have to pay social security and medicare taxes now when you go file your tax return because you didn't pay any taxes on your w-2 you will owe that money when you go to file your taxes if you don't have the tax credits to reduce it If you check your W-4 form, it says it. Federal tax is exempt. Okay. <laughs> hey, guys. All right, guys. So um, just to give you guys one more heads up, and I always warn you guys of what's happening. Um. The IRS has actually increased their lien notices. So if you owe at least $25,000 or more, um, the IRS have been sending out notice of liens and levies, okay? Um, I just received a few emails this morning um, from people saying that they've received notices. Um, so if, um, like I said, I just come and inform you guys of everything that we experience and everything I read, um, so if you know you owe a lot of taxes um, or you've been running from the IRS, <laughs> just like that client did, call me, call for Lasha Day at Suncrest. But no, but be aware that they are increasing and sending out um, notice of liens. And what's happening is um, the client said that she got notification through her bank. And so I perceive that she stated that she didn't get the notice in the mail or got lost, you know, through the mail process or her address changed or what, but just be aware that the IRS are putting um, levies um, and liens on levies on bank accounts and liens on assets. Okay. Wow. Okay. So Sharice says, can you pay the taxes owed for the year in six months or less and then go exempt for it? Yes. Yeah, so you have to have your strategy, Sharice. Yes, that's why sitting with the tax professional, you can. Um, because depending on what tax credit you qualify for um, and if you're going to take the standard deduction or the itemized deductions and then depending on what your itemized deductions are and you collectively tax plan, then yes, um, you can do exam. And it's interesting you say that because one of my most recent tax planning sessions with my client, based on what we're tracking for the year, him and his family don't have to pay any more taxes for the rest of the year. Um, now, they will get a large amount of refund regardless because that's the way that they want, but they still don't have to pay any more taxes to be able to still get a refund. So yes, everybody's situation is different. 
Um, you can maybe do exempt and, you know, do this and do that, but you have to make sure you keep on top of it. Because what I found was that most of you that do the exempt, they forget about it. Or you guys get accustomed to that additional income. And then it's challenging to go back to having taxes taken out. So if you do not manage your finances well, I personally don't recommend you do tax exempt um, because I don't want you to get accustomed to that additional income coming into your household. Okay. So Tommy says, over how much for IRS um, lien? Um, well, they've already, I think it was 10000 but I think it's, I'm going to have to look it up, Tommy, because they didn't change it about three different times. I think it's 25000 I should notice at the top of my head. I think it's 25000 10000 I noticed some clients are getting it for 10000 yeah, I think it's 10000 because at first it was like 5000 but let me see. And then another thing, um, while I'm looking for this to confirm the amount, um, the last agent that I was speaking with for one of my client's cases, she said that um, any amount above 500 no, any amount above 1000 that agent can put a levy on your um, a levy on your bank account. She said it's just up to their discretion to do it. So I'll find out, Tommy. But I, I think it's like ten ten thousand. Yes, yeah, I think it's ten thousand or twenty five thousand. Somebody else know if you know, put it in the chat. Okay, it's twenty five thousand. Hold on, I got it, guys. 25,000, y'all. Okay. But like I said, the agent said that they have a right to put a lien on any amount. They just don't do it. Okay. All right, guys. So I love you guys so much. Mm -hmm. I love you guys so much. Um, I wish you guys the absolute best. Let's not take shortcuts. Building generational wealth, guys, is a long game. And I'm going to be honest with you. You may not be the one that can complete the mission. But as long as you leave your child with a hefty life insurance policy, with possibly your home paid off, um, that's generational wealth, guys. You guys don't have to try to go and cheat taxes and set up trust and do all this and it, like it's, it, it, you don't have to do like to try to match rich people. Like that's their tax game. They're on a different financial trajectory. They have different level of assets, income, resources um, that requires that stringent type of manipulation and strategy. A lot of you guys have one business, two properties, you know, three cars or maybe five properties that's not worth 10 to 15 million or 5 million, or you guys just got them small, whatever the case may be, is this. You don't have to cheat to save taxes, guys. It's enough tax strategies out there for you guys to benefit. And doing a trust and doing an escort may not be your route, but because people don't really know how to tax plan, those are the only things that they tell you. Let me give an example. When I convert my clients over to S-Corps, right? And this is, let me just use a few of my clients that are millionaires, right? They already been S-Corps for years, but guess what? They still pay a, mm, a, a good amount of taxes. Let's say 70000 How much did he pay last year? One of them pay last year. 90, let's, he, okay. One of the clients paid 110000 He ended up getting a $92,000 refund back, right? But let me explain. He did pay the whole ninety two because he did 54000 on his W-2 with the S-Corp. Then his business have a 401k and he have eight, pro eight properties, three other side businesses and a shitload of investments. 
that client still pay about $100,000 a year in taxes because he is still not completely out of all of his businesses yet where he cannot receive a W-2 by law. And so I have not taken him off W-2 by law because he's still managing his businesses. The other clients, same situation. They have not reached a peak of financial wealth. And these are multimillionaires. <laughs> Literally on paper, in the bank account. Now, one of them, they got a recent investment that might bring in 50 million. Now, I'm already looking at opportunity zones and all of that stuff for them. But guess what their bill for me will be? $50,000. You're going to pay me $50,000 for me to strategize on how to save him legally 60, the taxes on 60 million. It's a game, guys. This is it's levels to this. Build your business, save your money, invest. Build your business, save your money, invest, buy your property, buy this, then sell the business, make millions. It's a process, guys. I, you guys have been sold this facet of, of easy wealth building strategies, and it's not. Love you. God bless you. Thank you. I have to go. Yes. <sighs> So you guys, you all have an amazing day. I went over my term, oh, went over my time, and here we go rambling again per usual. So guys, I love you guys so much. Connor says, you think of helping him setting up a foundation? Yes, we, so this is the thing. He don't really do a lot of donations. See, this is the thing, guys. Um, and that's why I said everybody is different. So my clients that are in that same situation like him, but already give uh, 50,000, 20,000 in current charitable contributions, we already been set up their private foundations. But this one that I'm just talking about in particular, he don't donate anything but like $250. And I always be like, hey, you don't want to donate anything. But the thing about it is, See, this is the thing you guys have to understand, too, that you want to first give your contributions um, solely from the bottom of your heart because you cannot write off 100 percent of your um, contributions depending on your AGI and your modified adjusted gross income. So some people in many cases I've had to carry over their charitable contributions to the next year because they gave too much and they didn't have the income um, to apply that it reduces it by. So they didn't get the full. So their charitable donation was limited. So here we go again. If somebody go and try to set up a private fund, a private foundation without the proper strategy, you're going to be donating hundreds and hundreds of thousand dollars. I didn't even realize that you may not get the full tax benefit. <laughs> Carter said, well, <laughs> Well, we'll see makes sense, like I said, as a nonprofit and a press. <laughs> okay, guys, so let me get out of here. So I love you guys. Um, please tell somebody what you learned today. Um, and don't keep me a secret. That's all I ask you guys. Share the content. Um, don't keep me a secret because people do report my content because they don't want their scams and stuff to be exposed. So every time I start to get a lot of traction, they report my content and, um, yeah. Okay. So if, you know, if you guys are enjoying it, you're learning a lot, please share me, um, with a friend, a family member, a colleague. Um, yeah. Okay. So guys, I love you guys so much. Tomorrow is Tuesday. So I think I'm coming to do the, the radio show tomorrow. I didn't look and see what the topic is. But guys, please be on the lookout for my new book, Audit Proof and 11 Steps, 11 Steps to Audit Proof. Shouldn't I know the title? I just changed it a bit, though. 11 Steps to Audit Proof and how to write off everything, how to make everything a write off, a deduction or something like that. So, yeah, guys, look out for my book. Me and Ken are supposed to be finalizing it this week uh, so we can go ahead on and officially, officially launch it i think you guys really would love it because it teaches you what you need to really take 
the meals deduction. And if you were to get audited, what you need to really take the home office deduction, to take the travel expenses. So all of these strategies that these people telling you, I'm teaching you in my book how to legally take it, what paperwork you need, uh, what logs you need, how you're supposed to do it, and then the nuances um, behind it as well, okay? So guys, look out for that. Um, yeah, and I'll see you guys hopefully tomorrow, and I'll see you guys on the next live stream, guys. Like I said, congratulations. Looking forward to it. Thank you, guys. Have an amazing day, guys. I love you guys. I will see you on another day. On another day. Where's my outro? Hold on, guys. I'm trying to do my little outro. Five-second outro. Okay, team, we got to have a better outro than this for my... um. For my live streams. Yeah, no, 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 no. I don't have no outro. Sorry, guys. Remember, we perfecting this process throughout, right? Oh, here we go. 10 seconds. That's it. All right, bye, guys. Mm -hmm.